Let's talk to Mark Oswald. He's a strategist at ADMISI. Very good morning to you, young Mark. Good morning. Right. Um, it's that famous day again. It's non-farm payroll day. I think the consensus you said off air was about 180,000. How important is this number this month? Um, I, th I think uh, given what's been going on with bond yields, which I'll come back to in a little bit, um, it's a relatively speaking important number. I, th I think the important thing to remember with the US Labour Report nowadays is uh, the payrolls number, which was our behemoth number uh, for all markets around the world for donkey's years, yep. um, is really um, secondary now to what happens with average hourly earnings. So that's the number which everyone's going to be keeping a close eye on. Um, the forecasts for both, I think, are actually quite interesting from a, a couple of perspectives. Uh, the forecast for average hourly earnings is plus 0.2 on the month, which is pretty much what the forecast is every month. Um, and that would edge the year-on-year -year rate up to 2.6 from 2.5, which is not going to have, it, it just doesn't put any pressure on the Fed. It doesn't, it's, it's not a bad number, it's not a good number. They'd like to see it higher. They would certainly expect it to be higher, given we've got the unemployment rate um, at 4.1%, and it's expected to stay at 4.1%. Um, so that's the bit which everyone will be looking at. The interesting thing with payrolls is that in the 15 of the last eight, uh, 19 months, the forecast has been somewhere between 170,000 and 190,000, only once has it actually come in right, okay. in that range. So, um, and this being January, um, people will obviously like, would like to put, uh, you know, have a read across from the ADP employment data that we had on uh, Wednesday. That was a lot stronger than expected at 234,000. And they didn't even revise down last month, which, uh, well, but they revised it down marginally to 243 from 250. But of course, last month, the actual official payrolls data were only 146,000. Now, generally, that's a, you know, those two are much more closely aligned in December. In January, the scope for absolute howling outliers relative to the ADP, you know, we've had plenty of times when it's been 100,000 wide of the mark. Right. Either direction. Okay. Um, so there is scope there, and part of the problem is there is a massive, massive seasonal adjustment. You know, they adjust up basically the levels of employment by about three million because of the job shedding which goes on seasonally. So it's a really very difficult one to read. It could be, it really is. Uh, if you looked at the manufacturing surveys, you would say, well, there's some downside risk because quite a lot of the employment indices fell, with the exception of Chicago. And indeed, there was a pretty decent reading in the ISM. Um, but overall, you're actually looking at things like initial claims for the survey week. We actually fell sharply from 266,000 uh, to 220,000, which is basically the low, 44-year low. Um, <clears throat> so I think really the underlying message is that you should keep an eye on the average in terms of payrolls growth. And remember where that lies relative to what the Fed thinks is the sustainable growth rate for payrolls, which is only 80 to 100,000. So even if we did have another big miss, say 120, 130. It would be aligned with the Fed. Yeah, it would still basically be saying that we've got strong labor demand. So that then leaves us with the question, depends which way obviously this comes out. If we were to get a weak number, perhaps we will spoke uh, this rally in bond yields that we've seen. Um, notably in the USA this week, we've gone through a key level on the US 10-year yield of 274. That 274 is basically a 30-year trend line uh, which has been broken and we are definitely through it uh, and we appear to be heading towards 3%. Um, and this has been basically a risk for quite some time as markets look at oil and look at other price indicators and see that basically we've been underclubbing our inflation estimates and we know that there are really bad base effects coming through in the March through June period. Um, the interesting part in all of this is there's uh, some divergence with it within the, the corporate bond sector. Now, um, investment grade um, bond um, spreads, um, and it is important to distinguish between the spread and the actual yield here, uh, are actually at their lows. So is the emerging market bond yield spread. The high yield spread has been basically gradually edging up, but it's only but very, very much, small. Right? 
What's interesting by contrast, when you look at the junk bond ETF, is the short interest is now at a whopping 25%. So there's a lot of hedging going on in the high yield area. But I think the, the risk in, in the bond area definitely still lies with the fact that people have got a lot of risk, i.e. they've got credit spreads as opposed to the government bond yields, and they aren't really taking enough notice of the rise in bond yields. Now, in principle, obviously, when one looks at um, 274 and one looks at the two-year yield at around about 220, you would be thinking, well, why is the dollar so weak when these yields are so much better yep. um, <clears throat> uh, than what's available elsewhere? Uh, the problem is we're also breaking higher in a lot of other markets. We've been through uh, a big level at 0.64% on the US, uh, German 10-year yield. German 5-year yields are up through 0%. They're still not very attractive, but I think the, where this, the, the, the read across for financial markets at the moment is, uh, as we've seen with the equity market upset, is we've actually crossed that two-year yield above the S&P dividend yield. The S&P dividend yield is now only at about 1.9, and you've got the two-year at 2.2. Uh, the case for equities becomes much less strong when you've got particularly short-dated bond yields, which are getting towards quasi-cash, offering you a reasonable return. And if you are concerned that we've got the equity markets overdone, then they are actually a viable alternative. They weren't when we were down at 1%. You might dip into them briefly, but you would be feeling, well, am I going to miss out on the next equity market yep. rally? So we are at a critical point, and the, the payrolls data, well, the whole Labour report will be absolutely critical to that, even if I would add that um, when you're looking at the, the trend that we've got, part of it is seasonal. Pretty much every year, whatever your direction of travel is for the, th the first three weeks of the year, at the end of January and in the first two weeks of February, you gen generally see an, a reaction against that. Quite often, it is a downturn simply because at the start of the year, you've got people pouring money into markets because they want to get the year off to a good start. They've got assets to allocate. And then once that wall of money has been largely absorbed, people start thinking about, well, what's actually going on here? And they start taking notice, as we've done this week, of, oh, my goodness, have you seen bond yields? So uh, it's, it's a tricky juncture, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Mark Oswald, as always, love your soapbox. Thank you very much indeed.